G'day folks, it's Rob here. And in today's video, we're talking about the basic aquaponic system, which has got to be the easiest aquaponic system for any of you folks out there interested in aquaponics to try and build yourself. The beauty of these little systems is a lot of you folks will have bits and pieces at home you can already put together to make a little system like this, or you can buy recycled drums and tanks uh, to get your system off the ground. Just before we get into looking at a couple of examples and giving you a few ideas for your own little builds, I thought I'd give you folks new to aquaponics a little bit of an explanation about what they are and how they work. Now this unit here is a basic chop and flip aquaponic system. It consists of a fish tank, a water pump to move the water around the system, some sort of solids capturing device, and then a biological filter, which in this case is also our grow bed. Now the way the water moves around these systems is pretty basic. It is picked up by the pump in the fish tank along with any solids created by the fish and is delivered into some sort of a filtration device. I like the little canister filters because they're very efficient at collecting the fine solids created by the pumps as they smash up all the solids fish waste. Now in this little system here I've included a bell siphon and what happens is the water level would rise until it initiates the siphon then all that water in the grow bed will then be dumped back down into the fish tank, allowing oxygen to get down into the bacteria that process the fish waste and also the roots of the plants. So those little bell siphons are fantastic at regulating the flow in and out of the grow bed. And if you're interested in seeing how they're made, maybe to make one down the track, uh, all you need to do is pop down into the description of the video and there will be a link to a bell siphon playlist. And there's a couple of videos in there as well as a troubleshooting guide. So with aquaponics, there are a number of rules of thumb that it is a good idea to follow. Now, there are things like fish stocking ratios, also water flow ratios through your um, fish tank and also through the grow bed, media selection and that sort of thing. And I've covered a number of the um, more common ones to all aquaponic system in a video. Now, there is one rule of thumb that I did leave out from that video because it pertains specifically to the basic aquaponic system when you have a flood and drain grow bed attached to it. So in these little systems, we need at least twice as much water in the fish tank as a volume in the grow bed. And the reason being is when water leaves the fish tank is pumped up to the grow bed, it basically drops the level and we need enough left in there so the pump doesn't dry out and the fish don't get too stressed. So the other option is to run a constant height or constant flood grow bed above the fish tank. Uh, what these basically are is a very similar plumbing to the bell siphon. It's um, a stand pipe that keeps the water at a certain height in the grow bed at all times. So basically a bell siphon with the bell removed. Now, because we don't have a water level fluctuating in the fish tank, that means we can actually add on an additional grow bed if we desire. Uh, this will give us a little bit more planting space up top for the veggies, and at the same time, the fish will always have adequate water down below in the fish tank. If you are running a constant flood or constant height grow beds, I think it's an excellent idea to have a large air source pumping into the fish tank below. That will ensure that there's enough oxygen in the water so when it goes up into the grow beds themselves, it will provide oxygen to the bacteria so they can oxidize the fish waste and also to the plants roots themselves, keeping the whole system running along happily. And when it comes to planting, I would recommend that you use quick turnover crops in your grow beds if they are a constant flood or constant height, mainly because plants that are long lived and have large root masses form within the beds themselves, they can over time collect a lot of solids and basically become a little bit of a ball. Now, if the water isn't passing through the roots um, freely, now you can end up with an anaerobic situation setting up. Basically, what can happen is some of those nitrifying bacteria can rob oxygen from the molecules, the nitrate molecules, turn it back to nitrite, and you could end up with a nitrite spike in your system. Definitely something to keep in mind. I think quick turnover crops like your salads, your herbs, your Asian greens are a great idea because when we harvest them, we also tend to take the whole root mass out at the same time, leaving nothing behind for the solids to collect around. So just a real quick little ad for our online interactive aquaponics beginner's guide. There is a link that shows you all its features down in the description below and one will pop up here. So pop on over to our website if you wanna see what it's all about. Many thanks to everyone who has already purchased it and helped support the channel. We really do appreciate it. That's enough of me spruiking, back to the video.
So we've now seen how these basic aquaponic systems work. It's time to have a bit of a gander at how you can knock them together using things you can find around the house like totes, trays, small aquariums and that sort of thing. Uh, now I didn't have a lot of examples of previous builds of the small systems. So I put the call out there to YouTube land and you folks certainly have delivered. So to help you guys design your own system, I thought we'd run through some of these photos just to give you a bit of an idea. Now Poncha Grow in Bangladesh have gone very basic with their system they've got a large fish tank with what looks like a couple of baskets of media just sitting in the top now this sort of system would probably be great for you folks who don't want to send, spend a lot of money on pumps and plumbing uh, this way you're basically just growing directly in the fish water itself but you can get more elaborate than that if you'd like Gurukan has made up an awesome little system just using an aquarium with a couple of grow beds made from a recycled drum sitting on top and a couple of ornamental ferns in the top of those grow beds. Nick is using a plant pod on top of his little aquarium and it looks to be growing some leafy greens and some herbs in there. Nicholas, Seth and Lauren have taken it a step further and they've built a little timber frame to house their fish tank and then have the growing space on top again. Now Jayandra has taken it a step further and he's designed a bit of a vertical feature. He has a fish tank sitting on a bench, then he's made a structure to hold three grow beds up the wall and the water is pumped into those grow beds and then flows back down into the fish tank itself. Now Anthony from Australian Aquaponics Official on Facebook, g'day mate, he's taken it a step further. He created an aquaponics veggie patch basically in his kitchen. It's a very tidy looking system, a bit of a feature as well. And from what I've heard, it's pumped out loads of herbs and salad greens right there in the kitchen where they're needed at dinner time. Storage totes have also been used fairly frequently in aquaponics. I've built a few systems out of them myself. Uh, now Lewis has made a larger fish tank using a larger tote and has a smaller tote as a grow bed sitting on top there. And I've seen a lot of folks in schools also use these totes like the Men of Mystery here. Uh, they've set up a very tidy looking bench top system for their school classroom. And from what I've been told, this system helped them win a grant to build a larger system in a greenhouse outside. So congratulations folks. And I do hope that the system is ticking along nicely for you. And thank you to everyone who has sent some photos through. I really do appreciate it. You really have saved my bacon. Now back to Rob from the other day talking about a small tote system. We made up a very small system for some friends with a goldfish or two in there years ago that did okay until the kookaburras found the goldfish. Uh, you can also use things like bathtubs. A couple of bathtubs, uh, one on top of the other, one as a grow bed, one with a couple of ornamental fish in it tucked away in the corner of the backyard looks absolutely fantastic. The other thing you can use are the ever popular 50 gallon or 200 litre plastic drums and there's a number of ways that you can build little systems out of that. I have a little chop and flip aquaponic system, link down in the description, uh, made from a blue barrel so check that out after the video if you're interested. Now our very first system was a basic aquaponic system using a 200 litre drum with a little port cut out of the top of it. And then we had two half barrels on top as grow beds. Now we had the water coming from the fish tank via a pump up into the rear of the grow beds delivered through a couple of valves. And then from there, the water would fill the bed, trigger the bell siphon and the water would flow back down into the fish tank itself. Knowing what I do now, if I was to build it again, I would make those two grow beds constant flow grow beds. And that way I could have kept more water in the fish tank down below and popped in another fish or two. As for fish selection for the smaller basic aquaponic systems, don't put in just the common goldfish because they can actually grow rather large. I've seen large ones come out of Wyvernhoe Dam just west of here. Uh, things like um, your little rainbow fish, your guppies, your gudgeons, they all make fantastic fish to run a little aquaponic system. As for stocking rates, I'm definitely no aquarium fish expert. So I'd check that out with the um, aquarium you buy them from or the fish supplier and um, just let them know what tank size you've got and they'll be able to recommend the right sort of fish for you. For you folks who want to have a crack at growing a fish to table size so you can toss it on the barbie, I would recommend that you don't use any fish tank under 500 litres, which is about 130-ish gallons in volume. And when it comes to sourcing these tanks and the troughs for the grow beds, uh, there's things like recycled stock tanks, water troughs, 
feed troughs, there's the humble IBC, the 200 litre drums like the one beside me here. If you can chop them in half and make multiple grow beds out of them. And they're all available from places like Craigslist, Gumtree, uh, rural supply stores will often sell them. And also drum recyclers like Tilki here in southeast Queensland, they pretty much will stock all of those things. You can buy them new off the shelf of course, and the cheapest place I've found to get them are either a rural supply store or the tank manufacturers themselves. There's a couple here in Australia that make the troughs as well as the smaller tanks. So for you folks that have small ponds on the go, you can also convert them into small basic aquaponic systems as well. Just like Matthew's done here with this timber frame pond. Uh, basically the fish are down the bottom in the pond, the water is moved up through the grow bed to help filter the water and it then just passes straight back down into the pond. So Gurk Han has also set up a little system out of his pond. He has a little tray sitting on top and a couple of baskets in there, just like the poncha grow folks in Bangladesh, with a nice little fountain off to one side. It's a very tidy looking system and thank you very much for sending the pictures through, mate. I really do appreciate it. Now, when you are planning your system, it is a good idea not to go out there and say, I wanna buy 20 fish or whatever. What you need to do is work out the total volume of the grow beds that you will be using to grow on the system. Uh, from there, we can work out how many fish we can stock in the system because those grow beds are the biofilters. The bacteria that inhabit there will oxidize the fish waste and turn it into plant available nutrients and basically clean up the water so it's not toxic to the fish. Now, the rule of thumb for the stocking rate I like to follow is based on the amount of media in the grow beds. So for every 25 liters or 6.6 .6 gallons of wet media below the water line, we can raise one fish to 500 grams or around about one pound. So to use the very cheap and easy to make IBC chop and flip system as an example, the grow bed holds roughly around about 300 liters of media. So we divide that by 25 and that gives us 12. So we could safely raise 12 fish using that grow bed as the biofilter in a small chop and flip aquaponic system. And of course, if we were to add another bed next to it, run them both as constant flood, we could increase the stocking rate a little bit. Do keep in mind though, that the fish still need roughly around about 20 liters of water each in the fish tank. So that will limit you a little bit as to how many fish you can stock, even if you have more than enough biofiltration. Now, the reason these basic aquaponic systems are such a good idea for you folks getting into aquaponics to start with is that they can be built on over time. And I know I've shown this before in the past, but we started out with a small chop and flip style system. We then added on a larger fish tank and over time we added more grow beds and later on filters as well. And that original fish tank basically turned into the sump tank that housed the pump and moved the water around the whole system. So just a quick word on solids filtration before we go. I know there was an example earlier on in the video. I do think it is a fantastic idea to try and remove the solids from the larger basic aquaponic systems if you can. Uh, you could use something as easy as a small little canister filter or you can get a little bit more elaborate and build a radial flow settler. Now, don't panic because that nutrient in those solids won't be wasted if you add it onto your pot plants around the patch or your soil veggie patch. Or if you wanna get more adventurous, you can use that solids waste to build up a nice mineral rich water simply by making up a little mineralizer. There will be a link again down in the description to give you a brief look at the one that we have on the go at the moment. Now, for you folks running a smaller basic aquaponic system, you can get little aquarium solids filters if it's just, you know, uh, probably around about 50, 60 liters in size, or you could run with a basic little canister filter if you wanna make one up yourself. There's loads of tutorials here on YouTube showing that sort of thing. Or you could do what we did with the small little barrel chop and flip and a few other systems. And that's just to put a little scrubbing pad from the kitchen, a brand new one, of course, underneath the inlet. And those little sponges can collect the solids material that you pretty much will just shake off a couple of times a week when you see them build up. So I hope the video has helped you aqua curious folks out who are looking at starting up your own aquaponic system. Uh, don't forget there's links to the videos down below that I've mentioned in this one. And also you folks who have already purchased our Backyard Aquaponics Beginner's Guide, 995 US, links down in the description. Um, there, all those links are over in that guide there as well with some bonus bits added into a few of them. 
Uh, before I go, I really would like to thank you folks who do come along every week and check out our videos. Give them a thumbs up and share them around with your family and friends. Love saying g'day to you in the comments down below. Also need to thank you folks who are supporting the channel by buying our beginner's guide, subscribing to the YouTube membership program, thank you very much, and also those guys who've been following us for years over on the Farm Your Own Yard website. Really do appreciate the support, folks. But I will pretty much well leave it there. I do hope you're all well and happy and your gardens and aquaponics are booming, and I'll catch you next clip. Cheers, folks, and happy growing. If you're going to run them with a flood and grain drove bed.